All right, welcome everybody. I want to address a little bit, I hope it's timely, um, if the market ever goes down. I mean, it's down today. Um, but um, this is SPX. How do you hedge? You know, maybe some ideas on hedging some of the more popular strategies that we do on the downside. I mean, you can hedge to the upside, whatever. So am I talking about an adjustment? No. No, talking about the beginning of the trade. How can you set up a how can you set up a trade, still make it range bound, but give you more room on the downside? And you could do the same for the upside. But since we've been up a lot, you know, you look at the SPX chart, you know, again, just for uh perspective since October 20, so October 27th. So let's say November, December, January, February, four months and two weeks, we're up a thousand points and 4,100. So that's roughly 25, 26%. And again, not that, you know, I have no idea which way the market's going, but I don't think it would be a bad, unreasonable idea to talk about hedging if the market ever goes down again in our lifetime. Do you agree? Right? Even though, uh, you know, again, from 312, 13, 14, 15. So since Tuesday, Tuesday we closed at 5189. No, excuse me. 51, Tuesday we closed at 5175, didn't hit the all time highs. And today we're at 5110. So we're down 65, right? And, and so at least you get a little bit of taste of the downside, not much relatively, up a thousand points down 65, right? So let's look at some of the more popular strategies that we embark on. And let's start with a, let's start with the butterfly. So let's, I just use this for example. So let's just say I've got five butterflies and a 7060, right? I start with a 7060. Uh, let me just set it up here. We're at 5112. Let me move everything down. 50, 80. Um, let me just. Forty-three. Give me a second. All right, this is a give you an idea. But let's say someone has five butterflies, right? So, so five butterflies. This would be approximately seventy-five hundred dollar trade. And you say, you know what? At the beginning of the trade, okay, let me just see if I got this all right. Oh, excuse me. So I've got this trade, the butterfly 7,500. And, oh, you know what? I know it didn't look right. I've got the volatility. Let me put the volatility back to where it was. So hedge number one, and again, this is not adjustments. How do I tweak my trade at the beginning? I mean, we can do this anytime, right? If you do a, um, you know, how you structure at the beginning, you could be range bound and have more room on the upside. You could be range bound and have more room on the downside. So if you look at this 7060, it's a $7,500 trade. I'm going to do a 10% hedge, you know, roughly $790. So 10%. It's not much to put. So <clears throat> let's go over this. And, and let's say we go down, we have this butterfly on, and we go to 5,000, right? Market falls, you know, butterfly on. Uh, we put the strike at 5120. 
and I'm not talking about any adjustments, it's just we have it on the market falls, whatever. If we go to 5,000, that's down 120 points, we lose 1130 bucks roughly today, right? And you say these can never happen. Well, the COVID correction, you had a couple days of 100 point moves, right, at the beginning. So if you look at this and you say, well, what if I, in a 70, 60, and five by 10 by five, just a tinge long starting out, what if I go in at the beginning and buy 10% hedge, the 4250 here? Now the 4250 on May 17th, that would be a what delta? It'd be a delta of three, right? But if you look now, if we go to 5,000, especially if it's in a day or two, what would you guess? VIX would be if we if we went down from 5110 ish area where we're at the 5,000, 110 points in a day or two. What do you think VIX would be at? We're at 15.28 now. Give me a number. <laughs> Give me a number. We go down 120 points over the next day, one or two trading days. What's the VIX going to be? Give me a number. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I think 1890, uh, uh, 18, you know, uh, 18 or 19. So if we raise this, we're 15. So raise it three percentage points from where we're at. And then we take, and this is a range bound tree. Yeah. And we take it down to 5,000. Now we're down 485. Where's this at? 5,000. And we take the vol up. We'd be down around half the price, half, you agree? So 497 versus 1130, does everybody see that? And that's not with, that's without any adjustment. And that would be nothing, right? 497 divided by 7,500, I mean, 6% on a 120 point move right away, right? And 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 the put will keep on giving because, you know, the COVID correction where the put worked well, it's just the vowels kept going up, right? Um, now, does everybody see that? So that's a hedge at the beginning, right? Everybody with me on that? So that's a hedge at the beginning. And... That's only being... On five, if I started out, I started out 1.76 deltas long on a fly. I add that put. I'm minus 1.99 on five contracts. So I'm less than a half a delta short, purely range bound, right? Now, how much did the theta go down? We went from 73 theta to 41. But... You just have to be in a trade a little longer, but you have peace, right? So I think that's one. Now, Sid mentioned um, at a one point, you know, a lot of times we'll look at if we get a 1.6 standard deviation, um, whatever long deltas you're at on your position, regardless if you're near an adjustment, just grab a put. Now, if we look at today, what's the standard deviation formula? So if we go 51, one times, let's just say we use <laughs> most of the options of the butterfly are this, what would be this? 
let's say we used 0.14, 14 even, times 0 0.052. That's a one day standard deviation. It'd be a little higher if you use a 15. So if I take 51 times 0 0.14 times 0 0.052, it'd be about 37 points for one standard deviation. If I use 0 0.15, it'd be about 40, right? So if I did this right, um, this is a one. So I've got us moving about a standard deviation today, Sid. Do you got that? You agree? Um, I don't have 1.7, um, uh, you know, unless you used a very low vowel, right? Um, oh, Sid's saying Jay's 1.8, 1 1.6 standard deviation for today is 50.90. Oh, I got you, Sid, 50.90, another 20 points. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see you're getting near there. Um, and so... But the idea is a put on the downside is like you're playing Pac-Man level three and you're getting frustrated. It's going too fast. It's like it shifts the game back to Pac-Man level one. The minute you buy a put, slows it down on the downside. So not only do you maybe not have to make an adjustment for a while, but you don't get whipsawed, right? Because you don't have to adjust. So now the number one way to any questions on that? The other way to hedge, right? I mean, if you look at, here's a standard, I mean, let's put it at, uh, let's move everything down five points. So this would be a standard 70, 60, um, this would be a 70-60 that is 28 days out. 70-60 that is, um, what did I say? 28 days out. Now, <clears throat> that's a 70-60. Now, if I look at this 70-60, your break even is down about 60 points. Excuse me, it's 50 points. Now, if we started falling apart, let's say we go 40 below to 50, 20, <clears throat> and we don't do something, you're down 700 bucks and 1500, that's a lot, right? But just by starting with a, uh, let's go to one contract. So if we go near, Let's say we go to 5,020. 5,020, uh, we're down 135, 5,010, uh, $175, but that's over 10%, right, on one contract. Well, just by, what if I make it 70, 60, so instead of 70, 60, 70, 65. Now, when you go down, do you see that? You go down like 40, 50 points under, much less. Does everybody see that? So that is a hedge, right? If we start going down, and, and the other thing is this, when should you start paying attention to the downside from a VIX level? In other words, are we seriously doing any kind of even thinking of going down per se if VIX is between 12 and 15? Yes or no? Are we doing any serious going down? In other words, you say, Dan, 
the last two two days or three we're down 60 points okay so we're up a thousand points in for some months and we're down 60 right uh, that's not serious do you agree so looking at the vix when should you start paying attention you know when 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 is it becoming real we may be going down we got to be do you agree it's got to be 16 or higher because if we're 15 or lower we're not going down much does that make sense so number one by a put or i mean not in order but number one by put. but does everybody see the difference between a 70 65 and we're just saying and again you could go wider but you know we're talking being you know neutral deltas a 70 60 versus per contract however with you do versus one delta short does everybody see that it's just one delta short on a short vega trade and you start going 40 points out to break even is a different experience than 70 60 without any adjustments does everybody see that everybody see that so it's a hedge but it's range bound, right? We're only a delta short. A delta short on a $5,100 vehicle is not directional, right? So there's plenty you can do as we shift. Now, once we once we get over 16, we start getting over 16, I'm pretty exclusively doing 70, 65s or at least starting out a delta short because I think it's a no brainer because you go down, it can weather the speed of the downside. And if we go up, VIX will drop and you'll benefit, right? So it's, you know, I mean, even one, one and a half Delta short. Are there any other ways if we start this, we go back to the, you know, uh, again, if we're between 12 and 15, 70, 60 or neutral makes sense. So let's go back to, 70, 60. Can anybody think of any other ways besides the long put or change the width from a 70, 70 uh, to a 70, 65? Now, if VIX gets over 18, I'm making that transition from a 70, 65. Because if we start getting 18, 19, 20, the market's getting hammered. I want a balanced butterfly, 70, 70, no questions asked because you can do it for a buck and for one and a half delta short. And if we go up or even too short, you know, you're going to get a lot of volatility help on the upside. Now, any other ways you would hedge the deltas or excuse me, if you want to hedge for the downside and still stay in the vicinity of range bound, any ideas? And we're just using as an example of 70, 60, 28 days out. Any other things you can think about? How about this? What if I got this April 12 butterfly and I look at this for the next week? Yeah, you could you could take it off and wait until things settle down and, and, and re-enter. You, you could always do that. I would do that more with shorter term trades than I would like a 30-day trade, but you could still do it, Sid. You're absolutely right with a 30-day. But what about this? Maybe a different idea. What if I have this on and I'm concerned about the next week, right? The expected move is really jumping a bit as the vols get higher. Five, six weeks ago, a seven-day expected move might have been 62 or 60. Now it's getting up more. Um, what if I looked at this and said, okay, next week, I'm, you know, I've got a, if I'm really concerned with next week and you got the Fed, I've got a $1,500 position. Can I spend 10% of my capital, right? And, and, and can I, sp and maybe you have five of them, or here's four, which would be 
$6,000 fly position. What if I went and put on a out of the money fly at the expected move? So this is down about 90 points. So if we go buy, again, we're thinking this hedge stuff, buy butterfly. Uh, 90 points would be 51.10 to 50.10, 50.20. And what if I do 25 wide? Just try that, it'll be cheaper. 50, 45. Uh, 5,000. So I'm spending a buck 30, right? So again, I've got a $6,000 trade and I'm going to spend $400, which would be, what is that? 7%? So very little. So here's the, here's this trade. Let's see how this looks. So here's where we're at. Here's where the underlying is. A little bit long, uh, not much. And this is four contracts, right? So if I do a butterfly, now I'm four delta short. Four delta short on the whole trade, which is only one delta per contract. I have four. What the heck did I do here? Interesting. Is it interesting when you take a, here's a 28 day trade. When you put a March 22, which is a seven day, the graph takes on the characteristic uh, the graph takes on the characteristic of the shorter term. So yeah, the March 22, so so the three examples I've given is, you, they're all the same. You start with a 70, 60 butterfly, 28 days out. The first hedge was buying a put. The second hedge was turning a 70, 60 into a 70, 65. The third hedge is say, what if I have this butterfly? I'm only starting out at Delta short. But if we go down, this would be the graph, right? Isn't that interesting how it, am I doing this right? It's like it almost erases the butterfly, doesn't it? You don't even see the April 12th. And, and, and maybe because, you know why? Because this is a seven-day trade. So maybe this is so dominant over the next seven days, this doesn't really matter. Am I right on that? But if you look, we start out here as we go down. I mean, you can really hit one, right? I mean, you think about it. On this trade, if we get in the landing area of 5,000 to 5,045, and we only spent $400, divided by 6,000. We only spent 6% 6 of our capital for a hedge. That thing can, you know, I mean, you're talking pretty interesting. Oh, John's saying you can select plus two at expiration. Oh, to, to show the later, oh, thanks. So just click this, John. Okay, you hit that. And then what do I hit? Hit uh, date. Oh, expiration thing. And then hit two, right? Okay, so, so this is showing at the expiration of the butterfly. 
But when you put this literally a $400 butterfly on, right? The, when you put the four, so if we go down in this area on the butterfly alone, you'd be down six grand, right? On the 70, on the, on the, on the April 12, but that short-term fly would just destroy. Am I looking at this right? So if we go down in this area, the expected move, with no adjustments, the butterfly alone, the April 12, you know, is down you, you know. Um, wait, what am I? Oh, that's the expiration graph. I got you. I got you. So that would say $900. It'd be down. But this is if it goes today down. But I'm saying, because this is seven days, if we can get into next Wednesday, right? Get into next Wednesday or Thursday, you can see a butterfly make a lot of money. You agree? And it easily offset any losses on the butterfly. Isn't that interesting? Does everybody see that? Yeah, I don't know how useful your I agree that this butterfly is because it's giving you the expiration graph, right? But if I I think it's accurate if you look at um I mean, this is the graph of both trades combined on Wednesday of next on Wednesday of next week. Do you agree? So you can see this whole journey down is good, right? Versus if we were just in the butterfly and we get near 50, 20, you know, it's not so pleasant. Anyways, I think that's interesting. Any comments on that? Do you like, I mean, and again, the nice thing is you got a $6,000 fly on. You spent 400 bucks, right? You're only a delta short, right? Let's see. Now, if we go up, if we go up, over if you're totally wrong, right? And we go up. It's not horrible. Do you agree? Here I'm at 5146 with the butterfly. On next Wednesday, I'm down 69 bucks, correct? I'm up 33 points next Wednesday. I'm, you know, I'm down a little bit. You agree? Down 50 bucks. If, um, and if I just have the butterfly, Yeah, I'd be up a couple hundred, but to have a hedge, I think a $400 thing is a no-brainer, don't you think? If you're concerned about the downside. Anyways, what do you think on that one? Am I missing something there, or do you, do you have any, any comments on that, or maybe how you would tweak it, or... Anything on that? Well, anyways. So I think using little butterflies like that, I don't know, that makes sense to me, right? I mean, you think about when you make an adjustment a lot of times, how many of you will double your capital at an adjustment or increase at 50%? Here, we're putting a hedge on the downside of 4% of your capital at the beginning. And that gives you a nice, you know, something that can really balloon up, right? 
if you run this on next week, I mean, just think about 400, what's this? For $520 can really balloon, right? And you got a landing strip of 40, 50 points. Now, if you want to increase the landing strip a little bit, let's say we go 30 wide. You see that? So you can create your own landing strip, right, with the expected move. Anyways, all right. Um, let me do one more for today. A, I like that one. B, I don't like that one. C, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> A, I like that one. B, I don't like that one. C, I'm not sure yet. I need feedback. A, I like it. B, I don't like it. C, I don't know yet. I need at least one person to put A, B, or C before I continue. Good. Dave. And a lot of times it is C, you got to play with it, but it looks really interesting, doesn't it? When you think a lot of you on the downside, you might add a fly to a fly as an adjustment. You're doubling the capital. This little $400 hedge will be much more effective. Uh, for a hedge, right? Anyways. All right, one other one. Now, in the world of calendars right now, um, I mean, we're getting to the upper end of the range for the year, 12 and a half to 16, which is a very tight range. So I still, at this level, I wouldn't be net long Vega much or really that much short Vega. I'd probably be at this level not short Vega, but not a ton. I think we could easily go up to 18 or 19, but I'd be net short a little bit of Vega. But, you know, if I'm putting on short Vega, I'd still do long Vega. So let's just say I put a calendar on. And here would be an example. Let's just say I take... Uh, And let's just say we go 21 day, right? You go a three week calendar for this one. You can go shorter term. You know, let's say you go, all right, here's a 13 day calendar. Do you want to look at a 13 day calendar? That would be a Friday. Or do you want to look at a 21 day? Any preference? 13 or 21 day? Any preference? as we look at hedging a calendar, 13 or 21 day, anybody care? Are you guys all napping on me? How many are, how many are already starting their Friday afternoon nap? The 13 day is a Thursday because of Good Friday. Okay, let's look at, as Dino says, let's look at, uh, but let's look at 13. Again, I think the best way to hedge a calendar at the beginning of the trade, not adjustments, but at the beginning of the trade, you know, is either place the calendar below the market. And that way you're not affecting the Greeks much or you know, the best probably a diagonal, but that's going to get you more delta. So if we look at, let's just say we look at a calendar, five wide or four or five wide. Well, let's say I go 13 to April 2. That'd be five wide. Let's 
So here's a calendar. If we're at 5115, again, as you've seen before, here's a five wide calendar, which is 13 days out. And five wide calendar, 13 days out. If you're at the money, it's 555. If I go 20 points underneath where we're at, it's actually a tinge more. So I would just, you know, easy way is just start at 20 points under where we're at and your deltas are still flat. You know, you might trade it, you could, you could trade it 25 points under. That gives you a head start to the downside and you don't have any short deltas. The other way to hedge a calendar, I'll look at a couple more ways. Uh, at the beginning would be, and then I'll look at one other approach. Buy a diagonal. And let's just say we sold the 5120. Then I'll look at a couple other ideas for hedging a calendar at the beginning. So I'm not talking adjustments. Does everybody see this? So now I'm a little bit short delta, but if you look very smooth to the downside, and, and, and the other thing is, even though it's March 28, 13 days, it's very low gamma, right? And so as we go down, my gamma, my deltas go from minus 0. 0.63 to minus 0. 0.18, nothing, right? So I think that's a nice way, because, you know, if you said to me, Dan, what are you trying to accomplish? Hedging a trade, hedging, hedging our normal trades at the beginning. I'm trying to get you 100 points to the downside before you have to adjust. That's a lot of room, right? That's a lot of room. 100 points to the downside where you don't have to adjust with the T plus zero, right? Now, let me look at another one. How about this? Let's say we're at 5115. I'm just going to, I remember talking about this years ago. I don't even know if I remember it. Let's see. Let's say I started at 5130. You with me? I start a calendar above the market. How many are with me? I'm starting at, we're at 5115, 25, 35. I'm going to start at 20 points above the market. So I'm seven deltas long, right? Seven deltas long, 209 theta, Vega 342. And now, say I want to protect for the downside, go in, and I'm going to go March 28. Let's go 30 days past March 28th, so we'd be out about 40 some days. And again, if I'm looking for the market to go down a lot or a decent amount, I'm concerned, I'd rather get a put than a put vertical debit spread. Put vertical debit spread could work fine. It's just not going to give you if things start breaking down. It's not going to, because you're not going to gain from the volatility. So here's April 26th. And let's just say I bought a seven delta put. So I'm going to buy the 4680 put. So if I buy the 4680 put, Um, 
Now, this doesn't look like when I hedged the butterfly before, I was using about a 10% hedge. This is about a 50% hedge, but let's take a look at it. In other words, my deltas are neutral. So range bound trade. This may not look good or not. let's take a look. So here's your, here's your calendar that I started 20 points above the market. Then I'm going into, and I'm 210 theta, 207 theta, seven deltas long. I cut my theta 25%, but I don't butcher it. Do you agree? How many agree? I cut my theta from 211 to 159, right? Didn't by far didn't butcher it. But now let's say we were at 5112. Let's say we go to shoot, name it, under 5,000, right? It's a 110 point move down this area, right? And as I said, VIX would go up, you know, minimum three points. If you have over a 100, 100 point move in a day or two, and you go to the, you know, 5,000, you're up money, right? You're up money, right? If I do this on Monday's date, you know, you're, you're up money, right? So, so that would be that one put. And if we're wrong, right, let's go back to, If I'm wrong and we go up, right? I started out neutral. I still got a lot of theta. And again, my single is out quite a bit. So the short-term calendar, if we go up, um, and I put this, today's the 15th. If I put this on, you know, next Wednesday, um, you know, it looks good, right? So, yeah, as Dino said, the power of the put in a fast down move is unparalleled, but, but also the put it on that it doesn't, like in this trade, in the calendar, you know, I purposely set up my calendar long deltas so that I can slip in a seven delta put, right? So I'm starting the trade. Here's where we're at. I'm putting my calendar up here. So if I'm wrong and we go up, I'm okay. But we get a, you know, anything like a hundred point move to the downside there's no possibility of whipsaw there's no problems there's none and 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 it's 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 you know here's the thing am i saying to do this all the time no but let me ask you how many people would say dan we've been up a thousand points in the spx in a little over four months four months and two weeks this would not be a horrible time to get some cheap insurance or to get some insurance. And here's my answer. If this isn't the time that you would consider hedging your trades, then you never in your lifetime will hedge a trade. Do you agree? If being up 26, 20, you know, whatever percent in the SPX in four months isn't going to cause you to, and again, here's the thing. I'm not butchering any of these trades. I'm taking in most of them, except for this one, you know, I'm just, I'm just hedging them. Right. So I didn't destroy the position if I'm wrong. Anyways, I think I'll leave you with that today, but anyways, just, just, just to talk about the topic. Um,
That's the purpose of this. Um, has the concern of triple witching today abated or is there still fireworks to come towards the end of the day? Yeah, I don't know, Sid. I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Dino or Bill Vogels here, anybody who follows the charts and the market, anything, you know, let's see the range today, Sid. We're the high is 5136, the low is 5104. What do most of you think? How many think we'll close in this range, 5104 to 5136? Does anybody think we'll breach the low or the high? Yeah, and I think Dino put it perfectly. I have no idea, but I will wait till the end of the day on Triple Witch. But yeah, I mean, I don't, the way it looks right now at one o'clock, you know, um, I mean, I would guess it would be between the high and the low, but who, I mean, we're only eight points from the low, right? Uh, let's just see here. If we look at just real quick, if you look at a zero day right now, let's look what the market's saying. To the low of the day is 5104. Let's look at the deltas on the zero day to see what they're telling us. Well, I mean, that's a pretty high delta for the 5100, isn't it? Right now. And if you look at probable, oh, that's 42 day. I'm sorry. I wonder what in the world was I? So if you look at a zero day today, so the delta right now The delta right now, the at the money, let's see this. Here's the 5115. That's where we're at right now. The delta is 50. And for right now, if we put the 5100 strike, the delta is 23, right? So if we go from 5115 to 5100, that's only 15 points. On a 15 point move, um, you know, which would be 15 point move, I have to go to the upside. Yeah, that delta will go from 49 to 76, right? So things can get dicey quickly here on the short term. I mean, it says the 5105, we have a 76% chance of touching that. No, I'm sorry, the 5110, we have a 76% probability of touching. The 5105, 58% probability of touching. 5100, 43%. So the 5100 is not out of reach, but I would say the probabilities are against us finish, finishing under 5,100, but obviously we all know it could, right? I'm just looking at the probabilities and stuff. Uh, the skew seems pretty even. Are you looking the skew between the different strikes, Sid? And it's, oh, puts versus calls. I got you. Um, anyways, well, thanks. Every, yeah, VIX is 15. Uh, so we're just at the upper end of the range. But again, unless we start getting into the 16s, you know, I mean, we're at the high end of a very narrow range for the year. But again, in perspective, you know, we're just down, you know, you know, we're we're down about 70 points from the high. 
right? But again, the perspective, uh, you know, a little over four months, we're up a thousand. So, you know, it's all perspective. Well, have a nice weekend, everybody. We'll be back on uh, uh, Monday. We'll go from there. Thank you.